Welcome to season five of the Irish Baptist College podcast, Let's Talk. I'm your host, Stevie Ellison. I serve as the Director of Training at the Irish Baptist College. The Irish Baptist College, through theological education, seeks to magnify Christ, advance the gospel, and strengthen the church. Uh, and in this series of podcasts, we're talking about all things new. Um, over the past year, there's been a lot of change in the college, lots of new beginnings, uh, and we're going to explore some of this uh, in this series of podcasts. Uh, and the hope is that what you hear will encourage you in your faith, will elicit further support for the college, and perhaps even tempt you into studying with us in some way. Uh, so to help us with that today is uh, our principal designate, uh, Dr. Johnny McLaughlin. So good to have you with us today, Johnny. Good to be with you, Davey. Appreciate you taking the time in uh, what's probably been a steep learning curve over the past month or so, yeah. um, but the time to be with us. Um, so let's start at the beginning. Okay. Um, introduce yourself. So your family, your interests, your home church, uh, your role in the college uh, now and then into the future. Uh, and then I'm going to press you on an interesting fact. Okay. So I hope you have something um, for us on Hopefully. that front. Hopefully. So go forward, introduce yourself. Well, David, thanks so much for having me onto the podcast. It's great to be here and great to share a little bit about my story. Start with my family. I'm married to Jenny, uh, Jenny McLaughlin, and we have three great children, Jonah, Maisie, and Jensen. Uh, Jonah is 11. He's just started big school at Methody, so he's okay. moved from being a big fish in a small pond a small fish in a big pond so he's really enjoying that the two of you can commiserate together with a yeah, big change yeah, <laughs> yeah we have been we have been um Maisie she's 10 so she's just doing her transfer test this year okay. so we had two years of transfer test back to back wow. and then Jensen uh, he's only five but he's got the most energy out of all of the children and they keep us on our toes so we're just really blessed uh, with the children and, and with Jenny um Interest, if we're not a church or we're not uh, serving somewhere, you'll find a McLaughlin on a sports field. We okay. absolutely love sport. And actually, Jen works part-time for Christians in sports. So that would be a big interest of ours. Not just playing sport, but trying to reach people mm -hmm. in the world of sports. So we do that as a family. Uh, we go to a couple of camps in the summer uh, as a family to support Jen and her work. And I try to help where I can. So Christians in sport and the whole sporting world is a huge area of interest. Uh, for us, Home Church Hamilton Road Baptist. And would you believe I've been there 22 years? My dad was a pastor there when I was a boy from I was aged 8 to 16. And then the church called me back as assistant pastor in January 2010. So I've been there for 13 years, David. And so when you add them up all together, I think it's about 22, 23 years that it's been a real privilege to be there and just love the members, uh, the elders and the deacons. Um, just love the community there and it's a real joy to serve there at Hamill Road. Great. And as you think about the college then, what's yeah. your role coming into the college? Yeah, well, I think my official title is Principal Designate, but like you, Dave, everybody's trying to work out what that, <laughs> what that, means. What that actually means. <laughs> I think in essence, it, it's particularly this academic year, shadowing Edwin and trying to get a grip on the movements of the college. And Dave, you've been a great help with that as Director of Training, getting to know the staff, trying to prepare lecture, uh, materials and just trying to get an essence of the Irish Baptist College and also praying and thinking about the future alongside you uh, and the management committee just praying that God would lead us and guide us for the future so it's sort of a year of transition a year of shadowing and a year of also praying about the future so yeah. I think I think that's it David good good well we've enjoyed having you Thanks. and I appreciate having you about the building and hopefully you'll continue to integrate well into the staff team here um Interesting fact, whenever you're pushed on this, okay. what, what's your go-to interesting fact? Well, I'll give you a pretty safe one and then a semi-embarrassing one. So the safe one is I actually love classical music uh, and actually used to play the trumpet and I used to play the piano, now very poorly, but I really do love classical music. And I know you joke, David, you've come into my uh, office a few times, you go, why, you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm sitting in my office, I can just hear this music come from somewhere, I think I'm losing it, but it's uh, coming from another office, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, just, I, I just find it really helpful when I'm studying just to be listening to music, classical music. So I love all things classical when it comes to music, but also my wife Jen started a business during lockdown called True North Life, mm -hmm. and it's again just encouraging people to get outdoors, and I was very supportive of this, delighted to help her, and I'd go, yeah, Jen, you've always wanted to do something like this. And then she said, you do realize we'll need models for the website. 
So my heart sunk when I realized that myself, Jonah, Maisie and Jensen would be trailed onto beaches and the mountainsides yeah. having to wear her gear for the website. So when it went live, you can imagine, Davey, I was getting texts and emails from different people with screenshots of uh, my career of having the model yeah. life product. So that's been hard to live that down. So that's an embarrassing probably fact about me. Um, so, Well, I think some of those messages will be resurrected once okay. this podcast okay. goes live yeah. because uh, there'll be a few new hits on that website, I think. Yeah. We well, have Excellent. to buy something. If you're going on to see the modeling, you have to buy something. Okay, yeah. okay. So that's the data. You can only have Absolutely. a dig at the new principle if you buy something. Absolutely. Like, Shameless plug. Great, great. Um, that's really interesting, but it's not the most important thing about okay. you. Most important thing about you, above all of what you've shared, is that you're a Christian. Sure. Um, so can you share with us um, just your conversion experience yeah. Um, yeah. briefly? Yeah, growing up in a pastor's home, that's a real blessing and possibly also a challenge. I know there's yeah. somebody um, yeah. who's written a book called Grown Up Christian. And so from infancy, I've been brought to church uh, morning, noon, and night, uh, lots of activities. And so that's a real blessing. But then sometimes you look back on your on your Christian experience and go, at what point did uh, Christ transform my heart yeah. and, and my life? And I certainly look back to when I was aged eight and my dad was the pastor in Milltown Baptist mm -hmm. Church in Belfast. And I remember that night very distinctly feeling the weight and the burden of my sin. Sometimes we talk about the uh, the burden of sin and i remember as an eight-year-old lying in my bed late one night chatting to my mum, and just I, I feel just this burden and this weight of sin and i remember that night confessing my sin and believing at that time that the lord jesus transformed my heart mm -hmm. and yet i would then say well from the age of eight to 16 like perhaps you hear at many baptismal services where someone says i think I got converted at this age, but it wasn't until yeah. you hear this sort of yeah. transitionary statement. And so I look at my life and go, well, at what stage can I look and say, well, from that moment on, I was producing fruit. Mm -hmm. You know, I think one old Puritan writer says, faith alone saves, but saving faith never comes alone. Yeah. And so I look at my life probably from the age of 16 and go, I could see that I was starting to produce fruit. fruit. Now I may have been producing fruit from age eight to 16, but we went off on a rugby trip to South Africa at 16 and I was the youngest player on the team. And uh, back in those days, Davey, 40 rugby guys in South Africa for a month was an interesting experience yeah, for a young 16-year-old sure. pastor's kid. And I remember the first night that we were there in Durban and lots of the extracurricular activities that were going to be happening in the evenings. I just remember being hit going, mm. am I a follower of Christ? Or am I not far from home? Yeah. In those days, mobile phones were just a brick. And so you, you <laughs> couldn't really have any contact properly with home. But I look, do look at that age of 16 as a significant moment where mm. I can see real evidence of spiritual life in me. Great. Great. Well, one of the things hopefully you're saying as you're part of the college is that a key aim for us is not simply theological education, but spiritual formation. And You've alluded to this a little bit, you know, when have you started producing fruit in your Christian life, this mm -hmm. growth in Christian character? Um, and often when we talk about testimonies, we talk about the conversion and then we stop, we say, great, you're saved. Yeah. Um, but what about the rest of your testimony, your growth as a Christian? Are there any individuals in particular um, that were helpful or had a positive impact on that? And mm -hmm. maybe try to detail specifically sure. what they did, you know. Sure. Um, so any any individuals particularly helpful in your Christian growth and what were the things they did that were helpful for you? No, it's a great question, Davey. I think, as I alluded to earlier, growing up in a pastor's home, sometimes that can cause children in the pastor's home to go crazy and yeah. to rebel against mm -hmm. the things of God. And just so thankful with my mum and dad, Freddie and Linda McLaughlin, that they modeled to me, I think, what true Christian ministry looks like. Mm. And in particular their pastoral heart for people. I remember nights um, being taken out of my bed because people were coming to stay. There was a crisis. Um, there were challenges. I remember just people coming in and out of our house in floods of tears. So in a sense, I have lived, I think, in an incredible environment where both my mom and dad have shown me 
what gospel ministry has looked like with their life. And so I'm just so indebted to God for them and showing me what it looks like in the local church context to just love God's people in the local area. I think then on a wider scale, people have impacted me in terms of my theological understanding and disciple me there. One particular person is John MacArthur, who I had the privilege of studying under for four years at Master's Seminary. And just to see his love for scripture, to see his love for the local church, and to see his zeal even, he's now in his mid-80s. He's still going strong. still going. And so I've just been really helped by him up close and personal, but also from a distance, just to see his love for the local church yeah. and his love for theology taking root in that church. Another person that's impacted me just from a distance is the preaching and the writing of John Piper. I love his passion mm -hmm. uh, that that it's not just just doctrine on a page, but it's doxological for John and he's just filled with the glory of God. And I just, I'm warmed by yeah. listening to him and also reading some of his works. I love some of Sinclair Fur Ferguson's work from a distance. We've had the privilege of having him a few times at Hamilton Road. So I've had a few chats with him personally, but just his warmth of ministry, mm -hmm. his simplicity of ministry where he's got such a great mind and yet he's able to distill God's truth to simple pithy statements, which I find so helpful and, and warm. Another person from a distance, again, that has had some level of discipleship on me is the writing of the late Tim Keller who's gone home to be with the Lord and just to see his uh, ministry of prayer uh, as he got older yeah. you could see him writing much more about prayer and renewal and revival and I know his ministry and writing around prayer has has been a real significant thing so there's been mm -hmm. people have impact that made like my parents right up close and personal and then lots of great writers and thinkers that have sort of discipled me though they have no idea who I am or yeah, for sure. Well, that leads us nicely on to the next question, which is really just a personal question because I love reading. So a um, couple of books, two or three books that have really been influential in your Christian life. I'm imagining some of those names you've mentioned yeah. already, maybe books that they've written, maybe yeah. other books. Um, and again, just how exactly have, have those books helped? Yeah, one particular writer that was very helpful to me is, a, is another person that's gone home to be with the Lord, Jerry Bridges. Hmm. And... Um, uh, you know, in pastoral ministry, there's been lots of people who have come to me in the midst of just real challenges and tragedy. Yeah, yeah. And one book that I said that if you needed to, you should walk two miles in the snow barefooted to get this book is Jerry Bridges, Trusting God Even mm. When Life Hurts. And and it's not a big book. It's probably only about 150 pages, but it's such a helpful book. I remember reading it the first time and being so helped by it personally. And I've just given it out to so many people or sent them the link on Amazon just to help them when life hurts. Because yeah. we all experience so many difficult situations, Davey, that I've just found that book, one, not only that has helped me, but really helped other people. I think another book and another writer that's helped me is uh, Paul Tripp. He wrote a book called Instruments in the Redeemer's Hands. And I remember reading that at a moment in my life where it's probably just a little bit stagnant and the gospel that saved me had perhaps just started to stagnate in my life. And I remember just him saying how, how the gospel's for now in our lives and do we growing in the gospel. And I remember reading Instruments in the Redeemer's Hands and just being challenged with the teaching in it, but illustrations of people where the gospel was really making a difference in their life. And then pastorally, a book that just came out at the end of 2019, 2020 by a guy called Harold Sankbill. Mm -hmm. And it's really called uh, The Care of Souls, Cultivating a Pastor's Heart. And that book was just a blockbuster, Davey. I remember reading it and going, I think they'll still be reading this book 50 years from now. Now, it comes from a Lutheran background, so there's some things that I'm going, well, that's, that's great for Harold, but maybe not my personal preference. But it's just a stunning book to help anybody involved in gospel ministry think through how can I best partner with Jesus, the great shepherd and shepherding his flock. And just how he helps us in that book to think about even the great opponent we fight and not yeah. fighting the wrong enemy. In church mm -hmm. life, we can often get tempted to fight with one another. For sure. Satan and his forces are trying to stir up all kinds of trouble in our congregations. Yeah. And so he just writes with a, with a 
theologian's eye and a pastor's heart just helping us think through what does it look like to serve in the local church. So those are sort of three books that have been helpful Great. to me. Excellent, excellent. Um, but you can confirm that it, in the future you're not planning a name change to Irish Lutheran no, College or no, Stan Baptist. After 130 years, I think that might uh, be <laughs> my demise, dude. Yeah. Good, good. Yeah, no, three excellent books. Um, I have to say I've not read Paul Tripp's, but yeah. read the other two. And yeah, Jerry Bridges' writing's excellent. So um, good. Thank you, thank you. Um, we're, we're going to shift our final sure. two questions, shift a little bit um, and thinking not so much about these influences on you, but mm. maybe just some advice that you can offer for others. So um, first piece of advice, um, maybe someone's listening to the podcast mm. and they thought, well, I really want to be a Freddie McLaughlin to someone else. I want to be a really, 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 really good spiritual there's only one. <laughs> uh, really godly influence on, on someone else. Um, how do they go about that? So mm -hmm. someone in your church stops you after Sunday morning, says, look, I want to be a godly influence on, on other people. Mm -hmm. How do I go about starting that kind of ministry of encouragement? Yeah, I think if, if you want to be of service to others, I think you yourself need to be very in tune with the Lord himself. Even when we look at the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5, all of the fruits, you could say, are other-centered, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control. So if, I think if, David, we want to have an impact on other people, we can't give to other people what we haven't already got ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so to have that warm, rich, devotional life, that prayer life, if it's not there, it can never overflow yeah, for into sure. somebody else. And even some of the people I've already talked about today, David, all of them just had such a rich, and do you have such a rich personal walk with the Lord Jesus? And so they write or they minister or they pastor or they serve as an overflow of that which is happening to them, whatever, in a devotion life, in the secret place, in the quiet place. And so the first thing I'd say is you can't give to anybody else what you don't have already uh, yourself. And even in the leadership realm, though, if we've established a, a solid, personal, vibrant walk with the Lord, um, there's one writer said, leaders are readers and readers are leaders and we need to keep reading keep thinking keep developing keep challenging ourselves mm -hmm. so that we can then encourage other people yeah. to be stimulated to read and to think and to challenge i would also say probably the last thing on this daily is we need to ask a lot of questions mm -hmm. i think the lord jesus modeled in his ministry he was always asking people questions he wanted to hear where the other people were coming from whether they were large groups the roman authorities or the religious leaders or even one-to-one -one with his disciples he asked them searching questions so that then he could best minister to them so those are some things i would say if you're trying to make an impact in people's life worth considering yeah well it's certainly important that we have that relationship with yeah. christ if we're wanting to encourage others and yeah. maturing in that relationship um, what about the other side of the coin then? Um, so someone who's maybe feels that they need that encouragement. They know that in the faith, they're young, they're immature, they need to grow, and they want someone to help them in that front. Yeah. How do you go about finding some? You know, where do you start looking to find someone to disciple you in that way, to help you grow? I think sometimes, Divi, in answering that question, there can be a little bit of a standoff in church between the older people and the younger people. Sometimes the older people think, well, the younger people won't want to hear from us. And sometimes the younger people go, uh, I don't know if the older people have got any time for us. And I've always encouraged people over the years to, for, for both generations to put out their arms, mm. friendship towards one another and to meet one another. I think Titus has got clear instruction for us about older men teaching the younger men and older women teaching the younger women. So I would encourage a younger person to just reach out to somebody and um, look at the person in your church um, and just say who exudes the love of the Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. who, who exudes a lifestyle of service and humility and if I was that young person I'd say can I buy you a coffee <laughs> can I can I take you out to lunch and um, can I uh, go with you to the prayer meeting just just look at where in your church somebody is following the Lord and say can I just come and stand alongside you? And so I think it's going to take humility, mm. older people and younger people humbling themselves to say, let's partner together. Yeah. 
go to an older person with a pr to the prayer meeting. I think that's a great piece of advice. Um, that was transformational in my life growing up, um, being part of that, having older people take an interest in you and learning and growing in that way. Well, look, that's great, Johnny. Thank you so much. Uh, that's us. So thank you so much for your time. Uh, thank you for being with us. Uh, I'm sure on future seasons of the podcast, we're going to hear a whole lot more from you. Um, so thank you. And we do wish you every blessing as you settle into this role, um, and especially in this kind of transitional year. Uh, I want to thank you for listening to Let's Talk. Uh, the Irish Baptist College is committed to training men and women for gospel service here in Ireland and across the globe. If you're interested in preparing for ministry at a theological college that is academically rigorous and vocationally focused, then I want to invite you to explore the opportunities available to study theology with us. You can do so by visiting our website, irishbaptistcollege.org, to find out more. Uh, there's also open events planned for January and February. Uh, visit the events page on our website for all the necessary information. Thanks for joining us, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.